I've been having contractions since last night. They started around 11 p.m. and gradually they have been getting worse and worse and worse. But I can still like talk through them, you know? Um, we're right here outside of the hospital because I feel like my water has broken. And yeah, I called the labor and delivery and the nurse told me that I should come to the hospital and get checked out to see if like the water actually did break. And I'm just a little nervous that it's happening, you guys. It is happening. All right, guys, so this is the second day. Where she has gotten contractions, but today they were a lot more severe since 3 a.m. Right, Mama? She's in pain, as you can tell. I'm leaving right now because it's been since 3 a.m. Right now it is currently 7.25. And we're headed to the hospital because I think she's coming, guys. I'm excited and nervous at the same time. I'm pretty sure everybody goes through this. But I just hate seeing my wife in pain and I think she's ready to come out. Let me get the door for you, mama. I got you, baby. Get inside. Watch your head. Let go. Just relax. It's okay, baby. Breathe, slow, watch your head please. No, 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 get inside, just be careful please. I don't know if you guys could tell, but she's been in pain for some time, so we're on the way, and I am excited, so we'll keep you updated. All right, we have made it to the hospital. I don't know if this is the day, guys, but it might be. Sandrita, muy bien hermosa y bien bonita. Te amo. Of course. Baby bump. Baby uh, no bump today, hopefully. Let's see how it goes. Cuando se pone bien verde, así, cuando esté en rojo, que está la contracción de la No, esto es lo que. Este es el bebé y esta es la contracción. Well, we're here, guys. Looks like we're actually going to have her today. Now it's just a waiting game. Look how many times I got poked. Her IV's connected. Uh, Unfortunately, this side of the arm wasn't doing too well. I didn't really get the vein. Are you on there? No, it has my information. Oh, okay. Well, how do you feel, Mama? Uh, I'm a stale cookie. <laughs> that a crumble one? She's one tough cookie. That's I what did she cry means though. I did cry when they did this. But pretty soon we'll have this little baby bump up. She is one tough woman though, and that's why I love her so much. God bless your mommy. What? So I wanted to give you guys an update. We're still waiting. <clears throat> they offered to rupture her uh, water and they did. So now we're just waiting to see if she dilates a lot quicker. I know she's in pain right now. And this is the time. Military hours, it's about to be 2.30. 
But she's strong, like she said she was. She's really a stale cookie. Hang in there, baby girl. After that clip that you guys saw, everything went downhill. My husband stopped recording because he didn't feel comfortable seeing me the way I was. He was more worried about me and my health and the baby's health as well than the camera and try to get a video perfect idea. So yeah, he stopped recording. I completely felt horrible. I wasn't myself. I was under so much stress. I was diagnosed with preeclampsia thing in the middle of the day or I think they knew it. Like as soon as I walked into this hospital, they took my pressure and my pressure was super high, 170. I started to swell up. I mean, it was insane. My face was getting swollen. My neck was getting swollen. My, my arms were getting swollen. Everything was getting swollen. The high pressure wouldn't go away. Like I felt my hands and my arms and technically my whole entire body just like like a tingling sensation like like something was just tingling and i thought it was normal but i didn't want to say anything because like i didn't want to like scare my mom and i didn't want to scare my husband so they ruptured my water to see if i dilated quicker which it didn't help at all after they ruptured my water they noticed that the water that was coming out of me was green so that meant one thing that the baby pooped inside my bag so I started to freak out. My mom was freaking out. My husband was even more scared. I was so confused, you know, like, I don't want to cry, but it was really, really hard. They noticed that the water was green. So they told me, the nurse told me, oh, the baby pooped. And I was freaking out because I'm like, oh my God, like she can pass away, you know, like something can happen to her i mean it's poop within the water bag and then she told me like don't worry it's okay it's not that much we're just gonna see you know if you continue to die if you continue to dilate this would be quick so hours passed and when i say hours i mean two hours and a half three hours and a half and i didn't dilate and during those two to three hours that were passing i remember that i was in so much pain because the contractions were getting stronger and stronger and much more closer they, i think they were four four minutes and a half apart and i remember during that time i kept on calling my nurse and i was like hey can you check me you know like can you check me like have i dilated like every 30 minutes or every hour and she told it came to the point where she told me and like she looked at me like super super serious and she's like i can't check you every time you want me to check you because you might get an infection and i honestly did not care about that to me that was not gonna happen i was just like can you just check me because i was like so and so out of it and that was already 3 p.m so i remember around 4 the nurse walked in with the midwife and then she told me you know what you haven't progressed ever since you came here so we're gonna do we're gonna move into the next step Step, which was the induction they were gonna add pitocin to see if I dilated fast they added the pitocin so I remember around four o'clock the nurse and the midwife came in and she told me you haven't progressed they checked me and I still was four centimeters um, dilated so the contractions were getting stronger and stronger and much more closer I think there were three minutes and a half or two nothing happened you know I didn't dilate but during this whole time that my contractions were getting stronger and my contractions were getting closer i honestly did not think about my baby like when i say that i didn't think about my baby i mean i was not aware of the monitor that was like on my left side that they strapped on your belly to monitor her heart rate monitor my heart rate in my head she was doing perfectly fine and i was doing perfectly fine even though i felt the pain i knew like she was okay that was my way of thinking but I do remember that my mom and my husband were watching that monitor screen and my mom kept on asking, like, whose heart rate is that? That kept on going up and kept on going down every time I had a contraction. My husband's all like, I think that's the baby. And it was the baby's um, heart rate that kept going down every time I had a heart contraction. Her heart rate would drop. Like, it would just go, like, spike. Like, it was normal. And then as soon as I had a contraction, it would just drop. I wasn't aware of that because I was so focused on my pain, on what I felt, what I was going through. That I didn't think that anything was wrong with my daughter. Like, I didn't know her heart rate was dropping every time I had a contraction. 
and now that I talk about it and now that I think about it, it hurts me so much. I was so selfish because I only thought about my pain. I honestly haven't talked about this, my labor story, in a while. And when I say in a while, it's going to be three months. I try my hardest not to think about what I went through because to this day, it's still traumatic, you know? So I remember the hours passed, they switched nurses and my new nurse that was coming in, I was like, hey, like I was doing the same thing that, that I was telling the other one in the morning. Hey, can you come and and check me if I was dilated every 15 30 minutes or every hour I just wanted to know that what they have done to me which was the breaking my water and that the induction was actually working you know like I wanted to hear that like I wanted to hear that I wanted to hear them telling me that you are dilating you are seven centimeters you are eight centimeters or you are nine centimeters like that's all I wanted to hear was I was dilating and that I was gonna have my baby naturally, but that wasn't the case. <sighs> Hours passed and it became nighttime. I think it was like around 10 p.m. I did dilate two centimeters more, so I came to, so it came to six centimeters dilated, and that was that. I didn't pass past that. Around 10 p.m., I was telling my mom and I was telling my husband, you know what? I can't take it anymore. I'm just gonna get the epidural. In my head, I'm like, the epidural is gonna like fix everything like fix all of the problems <laughs> fix um the pain that i was going through and that i was going to have my baby naturally so when i told my mom and my husband that my mom she freaked out she's all like no like sandra don't get it like tough it out like you've been toughing it out since the morning since 3 a.m you can do it she's gonna be here you know and just be strong and uh, my husband was telling me the same thing and i remember i freaked out like when i said i freaked out i started crying and i told her i'm like you're not the one going through the pain i am like you guys don't feel what i'm feeling so i'm over it i'm gonna get the epidural and the nurse was right there when i when we were having this discussion and the nurse turned to me and then she's all like you know what sandra it's okay, it's 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 okay for you to get the epidural. You're not gonna be less of a woman if you get it. In my head, I'm like, my mom and my husband are not telling me to get the epidural because I'm gonna be less of a woman. No, she's a Latina. She's a very hardcore Hispanic mom that had me without an epidural. And she has heard a lot of stories, and so have I, of people getting an epidural and like them putting it incorrectly and like messing with their back or have lower back pains because of the epidural in the near future so that's why she was telling me like don't get it when she ordered the epidural it was like 10 50 almost 11 and i remember that she told me that the person who was gonna give me the epidural was actually giving another person an epidural and i remember telling her i was like can you tell her to hurry up like please call her like tell her to hurry up like walk fast like run to me you know like i can't take this pain anymore or any longer she's all like she's coming she, like she was like be patient you know like you've been having these contractions for a very long time you could just say like, wait 15 more minutes and i was like okay so when the person who was going to give me the epidural came into my room my mom walked out because like she's like i can't see that and my husband did not look when they were giving me the epidural because it was like traumatic for them like to see me bent over you know and like put a huge needle in the back of my spine my mom stepped out and they were giving me the epidural she stepped back in after they were done and she saw that i got more calm because obviously the medicine was helping even though it was like the most bizarre thing i have ever felt like the contractions were there my stomach was getting hard like i felt the cramps um not the cramps but i felt that st my stomach getting hard and contract but I didn't feel the pain, you know? It was like the most bizarre, weird thing, weird sensation ever. So by that time, it was 11.30ish, I think. Yeah, 11.30ish, 11.40ish. So she told me she was going to go home and try to rest. And she was going to come the next day. She said goodbye to me. She gave me a kiss. And she said goodbye to my husband. 15 minutes after my mom had left, everybody started coming into my room. I mean, nurses, doctors, midwives, and like whatever you call it. I don't even know how many people were inside the room, but there was so much. I remember my night shift nurse, she kept on turning me from one side, turning me to the other side. 
and I was like, what's going on? You know, and like my husband was like already preparing himself to go to sleep. She told me like there's something wrong, but like she wouldn't say what was wrong because like she was just so worried about the baby to get her heart rate back up that she didn't tell me what was going on. Like right after they told me um, your daughter's heart rate is dropping. So she, her heart rate was I think a 140 or 130 and it dropped to 40 and it was dropping to 30 and my baby was suffocating basically like the doctor was already there and then she told me we're gonna have to do an emergency c-section right now her heart rate is not responding and it's not going back up so that's gonna happen she was like calm down but like while she was saying calm down i had like two nurses right here and another two nurses right here the two nurses right here were disconnecting me and moving me like i don't know what they were giving me but they gave me they numbed me more than i was supposed to within seconds so i honestly did not feel anything i didn't feel no sensation from my chest down i didn't feel any sensations remember one of the nurses like gave me this one shot so this is for your contractions to stop like we want your contractions to stop and i was just like why and then she said like to get the baby's heart rate back up and i remember when i was saying why i was like having a panic attack i mean they were putting so much medicine into my body that I just started to shake like my whole entire body started to shake when I say my body from my chest down I didn't feel anything so that wasn't shaking but my shoulders my face my mouth my my upper body was just shaking I was just like doing this and I couldn't control the shake like he was asking the nurses like what's going on and then they told him like oh she's going to have an emergency c-section get all of your stuff ready and then start following us there was like speed walking slash running into the or and i remember they were just like literally ripping my dress apart because i remember that i had tied it down like so they give you two gowns so one to cover yourself in the front and then another one to cover yourself in the back i tied it super super tight because like i didn't want nothing to be like all hanging there you know and like to be like to the public <laughs> i remember they cut top part of my gown because they're all like oh my god like why'd you tie yourself like so much and i'm like well obviously i don't want to be like exposed even though like they had seen me completely butt naked like they they check you they're like no other i mean you're just like a public person <laughs> when you're in labor they were cutting the gown and i remember i asked the nurse while she was giving me this one liquid medicine to drink to prevent um for me to getting nauseous so i remember i was drinking it and i was like hey but my husband's not here you know like i was so worried that my husband was not going to be there and see my daughter be born instead of like me actually going through everything that i was like living so then the nurse told me and she's all like don't worry about it he's gonna walk so as soon as that they were cleaning and disinfecting like where they were about to cut they were um they had like put me on all of like i don't know they hooked me up to like some weird machines i don't even know what they were and i still don't even know what they were but they were hooking me up to the machines and my husband walked in and i remember i saw him and i was like like this is actually happening you know like you no know, tears were coming down like i wasn't crying at that time i was in shock that everything was happening so quick and that i was going to have an, em an emergency section that i didn't even know what to say you know i just looked at him and then he looked at me and i remember like his face expression was like it was just boy but he toughed it out that he just like was just there talking to me he was just there talking to me and he was like everything's gonna be okay you can do it just afraid it was an unknown you know afraid if it was going to be an okay emergency section like afraid that it was good if i was gonna be okay after like if my daughter was gonna make it or not and i remember he he was just telling me that you're gonna be fine sandra you're gonna make it the baby's gonna make it you know we're gonna be okay and i remember the doctor paused like she completely stopped you know she's all like okay her heart rate is going back like mama like be strong you know like she is okay you're doing fine and i was like okay fine you know so we were in the or for 20 minutes to stabilize the baby's heart rate well she was stable for 20 minutes so then they told me you know what we're gonna put you back in the room but we're gonna try our very best um for you to have like a natural vaginal birth 
and I remember that they pushed they were pushing me back into the room my husband was like with his stuff <laughs> like he was just following me and he was all like you were gonna be okay you know like you're not gonna have an emergency section anymore you know she's gonna be born naturally and that was like a relief for five minutes so we got into the room and the nurse wouldn't move from me and then she's all like there's still something wrong like her heart rate keeps on going down and her heart rate was going down every time i had a contraction and then my shakes continued again like they 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 came back and i was like okay you know like like what what's next you know so then the doctor came inside and then she told me, she's like, Sandra, I need to tell you one thing. We need to get the baby out alive, so we're going to have to do a C-section for you. And I was like, I mean, like, what can you say at that point? You know, like, you can't argue. Like, you know, at that time, I wasn't even thinking about me anymore. Like, my pain had gone away. Like, you're having a C-section and I'm like, it is what it is. So just, like, make it quick, you know, like, hurry up, you know. Mama's got a birthday in a week herself, huh? Yeah. Hi, Mama. Hi, little boy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, my love. <laughs> How do you feel? Huh? Tired. Yeah, I'm tired. Exhausted. So one thing I have learned about my labor is that I couldn't decide and I can't decide how I want my things to happen because I remember I was taking the ochre water, I, would, I remember I was taking the raspberry leaf tea, eating dates, walking and doing exercise and doing everything that I can to have a natural vaginal birth but obviously it wasn't in God's plan to have it that way and his plans was for me to go through what I went through and for her to be born the way she was born and all glory be to God I can't argue with him he just knows why it had to happen that way and why I had to go through that the things I went through and all I have to say is thank you Christ and just be grateful you know be grateful that my baby girl is here healthy that i am healthy that we both are doing okay and i honestly wouldn't change not one single second of it if you ask me again would you do this again to have her i would definitely say yes i would go through it a thousand percent again for her because she is the biggest blessing god has ever given me and I now know what true love is. Like I look at her and I'm like, oh my god, like like I love you unconditionally, like